Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name is Barbara and I'm so excited to welcome you here to this video where I'll be talking about all the books I read in October. October was really great reading month for me. I read a lot of books. I read more books than I read ever in one month in my life. And I read more books than I read the whole year of 2018, I think. Yeah, insane. It was a really, really great reading month for me. And I want to tell you about all of these books that I read and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. I will also try to keep it a little bit shorter because it's a lot of books and I don't want this video to be super long, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it will not be a super long video. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I want to start with some um, statistics. I have it written all in my little notebook. So in the month of October, I read 15 books. Insane. Anyway. Out of these 15 books, seven were physical for ebooks and for audiobooks. And all these 15 books summed up to be 3,877 pages, which is approximately 125 pages a day. That's a lot. That's a lot for me. Anyway, now I want to also go really quickly through all the genres. So there have been five graphic novels or comics, which is why I managed to read 15 books. Uh, then we had four horrors, one thriller, one contemporary book, one fantasy, one romance, one sci-fi and one historical fiction. So it was pretty, pretty spread out all over the genres. Uh, but yeah, lots of horrors actually this month. Out of all these 15 books, 11 were adult books, three were YA and one was a children's book. <laughs> And then uh, three of these books I own, the rest are borrowed from library or from online, like script. And then I also like to do the statistics of authors. So 11 authors were women and the rest authors, four authors were men. And then also there were 13 white authors and two BIPOC, uh, which I usually tend to have more BIPOC readers, but well, this month it didn't turn out to be that high, but I think that's okay. And then just a star rating, uh, just to sum it up. We had one five star read, six four star reads, which I think is great. Six three star reads, all right. One two star read, zero one star read, and one DNF. I didn't finish one of the books. So that's all the statistics I wanted to talk about in the beginning. So now let's jump right into the books. First book is Welcome to Dead House by R.L. Stein, and this is the first book in the Goosebumps series. This is a children's horror book and it was for our Book Babes book club. Uh, really quick read, uh, really short, it was like 120 pages, so I read this really within, I don't know, three days. It was the first Goosebumps book I've ever read and I wasn't exactly impressed. It was just, okay, it was it was fun, but I'm not really looking forward to read more, more of these books. I will not be reading more of the Good Moms books. Like, I feel like it's not exactly my type of book. So this was fun, but uh, no more. So I gave this one three stars. Okay, the next book that I read was Mooncakes by Susan Walker. I don't have a physical book. And uh, this book is... Uh, really like autumn looking uh, graphic novel and it was the first graphic novel I've ever read and I don't think graphic novels are my thing uh, because this had no plot, everything just happened, nothing was explained, uh, no thank you. The, the art was really cute and there was like really pretty picture, I also I'm gonna pop it up here and then there is one picture that perfectly summed up my feeling during reading this book. This could have been really great book but I don't know it just somehow didn't feel right it felt a little bit over the top for me in the sense of we had characters who is non-binary we have character who has who is deaf or mostly deaf we have grandmothers who are gay well all this is great but it just felt like it all really like pushed into it and forced into it so I wasn't really captivated by this book unfortunately but it was really cute so this one got two stars. The next book I read was Adulthood is a Myth by uh, Sarah Anderson. 
This is the first book in uh, Sarah Scribbles and I got also the other two books in the series which is Big Mushy Happy Lamp and Herding Cats. And these are all by the same author from the same series. This is basically just comics and this one was on my TBR for years and it's just really like comics like this. And I really laughed out loud so many times. I sent pictures of this to my boyfriend and like it was so funny. This one was a five star, this one was perfect. And then I jumped into the Big Mushy Happy Lamp. Not as perfect. <laughs> It started to be a little bit less relatable, a little bit more specific, especially in the end when she was talking. I mean, it was still relatable. I think that she was talking more about anxiety and stuff. Like there is even like text and stuff. So that was four stars. And then the last one was Herding Cats. And this one got three stars because in the end she was talking a lot about artists and how artists struggle and how internet influenced artists and stuff like that. So that I couldn't relate to at all. So that was a little bit... Uh, bummer for me in the end. Anyway, it was really fun. I really, I really liked them. They were, they were really fun, quick reads. And then also I read Things by Sarah Anderson. It's the same author. So this is graphic novel slash comic. And I love it has like black spread edges. So it's really, really pretty, I think. But there is not really any stories. Like on the first page, they meet and they go out. On page number 10, they get married or whatever. <laughs> Not exactly, but it felt like really quick, like there was no story, no romance, no build up, nothing, absolutely nothing. So I know from this book, after reading two graphic novels this month, graphic novels are not for me. I need more gibberish around it, you know, not the gibberish, but like emotions and everything, which here wasn't at all. Uh, what I liked about this one was some of the pictures or like some of the pages were really cute and really funny, especially funny. Like the romance is between a uh, woman vampire and man werewolf. And uh, they kind of share this how odd they are. So that was really funny. Some of the moments were very hilarious. So this was, this was kind of fun. And this got uh, three stars. The next book I read was American Dirt by Jenny Cummins. Uh, this book is about a mother and her son in Mexico whose family, entire family, gets killed by a cartel. And uh, that's how it starts. It's like you open the book and the first sentence is One of the very first bullets coming through the open window above the toilet where Luca is standing. And it's like, you're writing. Basically the entire book is about how this woman is trying to save herself and her son especially so they are not murdered by the cartel that the rest of their family was murdered by and they're trying to escape to El Norte, to the US um, basically riding on top of the trains which is extremely dangerous and people die there and people get really hurt there so uh, it's super dangerous and they, the entire book is them uh, trying to escape the cartel uh, this book get a lot of uh, controversy or was quite controversial because people say that Jenny Cummins, she is white author. I think her grandmother is from Costa Rica or something like that. So she has some Latin roots, but she's not Mexican and she's not from Mexico and her parents were not from Mexico. Um, so there was a discussion around this, why she's writing a story of a Mexican family struggling with cartels. Um, she also addresses this in the end, in the acknowledgements or in the author's note. Uh, she says that she was not sure if she should be writing this book uh, because she didn't experience it herself and uh, maybe she should let the people from that culture and who experienced it tell their story. But she also talked to her other Latin friends and people from Mexico and they said that it's brilliant that you want to make the story. It's a fiction story and somebody needs to say it. And if you make thousands of people read this book, it will bring attention to this issue. And that's the point of the book. I think we could give this book a slack. It was a great book and maybe not exactly what everyone should be reading because we should support the authors who experience this firsthand. And I found a couple of those, so I'll link it all down below if you want to have a look, if you want to read more books that are more authentic than this, but this is clearly fiction. And I think it was very well done. And I got, gave this four stars. The next book was The Bone Season. This was Mooney's book club read. And this is the first book in the Bone Season series. It's written by Samantha Shannon. 
And I don't really know what to say about this book because it, it had so much potential, but it just felt flat for me because there are so many things that were not explained. Anyway, let me let me just... Uh, uh, the year is 2059. Paige Mahoney is working in the criminal underworld of sea in London. Her job? To scout for information by breaking into people's minds. For Paige is a dream walker, a rare kind of clairvoyant, and under sea on law, she commits treason simply by breathing. Do you understand any of it? Because I didn't, and I didn't understand the book the first, I don't know, 50 pages. Uh, it's all this uh, nonsense <laughs> words. Like, there is even 10 pages of glossary in the end where there are all different kind of words explained that I, I have no idea what they mean. So the first 50 or 100 pages, I kept going to the back of the book to find out or like to read what these words mean. So I didn't understand a lot of it. And then finally, when uh, stuff starts happening, it's just, I didn't vibe with it. This uh, main character, it just felt shallow and she was naive, but at the same time, really paranoid. And I didn't know how to deal with it with myself because how can you be both of those things at the same time? And she was, and it was, that was just so weird. And then also the ending was completely like, I have no idea what happened. And then when we, I read it two weeks before we had the book club discussion. And then in the book club, we were talking about the ending. And I'm like, I have no idea what we're talking about. I don't remember anything about his book. Well, something obviously, but not the ending. And like, what happened to all these characters? And I don't know. I would be open to read the next book, but I'm not exactly sure I want to because I would feel like I need to reread the second half of this one to know what's happening. And that's just weird because I read this book just this month. So, and there is seven books in the series. I don't think the series is for me. Anyway, this I gave these three stars because I had fun. I just had so many so many issues with it. So, do with that what you will. The next book is My Sister the Serial Killer by Onkan Breifate. This is a thriller, it's really short. And uh, basically this is about two sisters who one of them keeps killing guys. Uh, it basically starts with serial killer sister calls her sister. Hi, I killed him. Can you please come and help me? <laughs> and it just feels so surreal and ridiculous. But at the same time, it was so much fun. Um, yeah, and then uh, she helps her clean up the mess after this boyfriend, as she did the two previous boyfriends. Uh, nothing really happened between the two, or not that we know of. And uh, this sister has no sense of what's wrong and what's right. It's like, yeah, I killed the guy, but uh, why, do you, why do you think I did something wrong? I did it in self-defense. But we don't know if she did it in self-defense. And the sister is not sure she did it in self-defense. Like, we don't know. And this sister is just like, yeah, whatever, whatever. You just blame me for everything I do. So that was kind of weird, but it was also entertaining. Yeah, and then she falls in love with the crush of the other sister. And now she's scared that she's gonna kill this guy as well. And then uh, all kinds of stuff happens and it was really fun. It was a really quick read. I really enjoyed it. Four stars. And the next book I read was My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. And when I talk about that one, I'm gonna mention that I read also this one. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by the same author. Uh, actually, in the beginning of this book, he says that this book happens a couple of years later, after the My Best Friend's Exorcism, in, in the same neighborhood, but they are not related, really. Uh, so it's uh, really kind of fun. And the first one, My Best Friend's Exorcism, is about two friends in high school, I think, so they're teenagers, and one of them uh, starts behaving strangely, and now the friend is trying to help her, but uh, she's not sure what's wrong with her, why she's behaving this uh, weirdly, and the adults don't believe her, that she's behaving weird, so now it's like, leave her alone, go home, and yeah, it's basically these teenagers really struggle with the parents to believe them that something's wrong, and to help them, and then the second book is basically from the point of view of the parents, trying to help their children who are in danger. So it's the same kind of, not storyline, but it is very similar storyline uh, from a different point of view. So the first one is from the point of view of a teenager. This one is from the point of view of the mother, like a different mother. <laughs> in this one, there is this strange guy who moved in to the neighborhood after his uh, grandmother died and who lived in the neighborhood. And now children start disappearing. And uh, so this main character goes, Patricia goes and tries to find out what the hell is wrong. 
and where the children start disappearing and she gets suspicious of this guy and she tries to convince her friends in the book club that uh, there is something wrong with this guy and again nobody believes her so these two storylines are pretty similar but I love them both of them I enjoyed them so much it was so creepy and so dark and twisted but it was funny as well it was great uh, one thing, one problem I have with these books, only one problem I have with both of these books and that's that basically the story is spoiled by the name. So, for example, the Patricia goes, oh, this guy is weird, maybe, maybe he's a vampire, but we know he's a vampire, it's in the name. <laughs> that eliminates the trope of uh, unreliable narrator, which is good because I don't like unreliable narrators that much. So that's great that I believe her and I want people to believe her too. But at the same time, it completely spills. And also the, in, the, in the previous one, the best friend's exorcism, it's in the name that this friend is possessed and will get an exorcism. So now I spoiled it for you as well, but it's already spoiled in the name. So you would already know. So that's my only problem with the book, that basically there was no, no really like suspense. Like, is she right though? Like maybe she's wrong. Is he really a vampire? Like, what's going on? You know, there is no big twist or anything. So, but other than that, I love them. So, both were four stars. Also, I listened to both of them on audiobook, and audiobooks were ah, amazing, amazing. So, yeah, I would recommend to listen to those on uh, audiobook. Also, what I love about them is the My Best Friend's Exorcism. Each chapter is named after an 80s song. In here, there are like the book is split in different chapters many chapters and each chapter is named after a book from 80s as well so that is, that is really cool and then the next book he has that i haven't read yet but i want to is called horror star and that's basically a book about a haunted ikea house really like something strange happens there and there each chapter is named after furniture from ikea <laughs> So I think that's like really special touch, I love it, I love it. The next book I read was The Ex Hex by Erin Serling. This book uh, came out just this month and the cover looks so cute. I thought I would love this thing and it sounds amazing. It basically, hex gone wrong. So these two protagonists, like the couple, they used to date nine years ago for three months during the summer. And then they broke up because he did something or basically didn't tell her something important. So they broke up and uh, she got drunk and uh, with her cousin they just were fooling around and then just they hexed him but they thought they were just having fun and it was just a joke but they didn't realize that ac they actually hexed him and then when he comes back in town nine years later all kinds of things go mayhem and the atmosphere i love this is a perfect autumny halloween -y place village i loved the descriptions and the atmosphere of it there was just something missing, like the beginning was amazing, the end was really good. In the middle it felt a little bit weaker, uh, I felt like it was lacking a little bit of plot, which I expected more from a book like this. At the same time I had so much fun, it was really cute, they were so, like they had the chemistry, which was really great. And yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I expected and I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed In the Holidays by Kristen Lauren I read last year. And that one got four stars from me, so I felt like it wasn't fair to give this one four stars as well if I didn't enjoy it as much. So this one got three stars, but it was still really cute and yeah, I definitely recommend it, it was fun. The next book I read was Red Rising by Pierce Brown and this is the first book in Red Rising trilogy. No, I don't think it's a trilogy, it's a series, in Red Rising series. And I was fighting with this one. The first, I don't know, 50 pages were a lot of info dump. A lot of it. Like, I had no idea what's going on. And it was just, like, I came to this dude's locker room where they talk about... I have no idea what. I don't understand dude's locker room talk. And this felt exactly like that. Like, I just came to this world where they didn't want me there, you know, kind of thing. So I didn't like it and I struggled and then I asked uh, people on Instagram and they said, yeah, it gets better, it gets better, just push through. And so I did. And then I got to a point like, yeah, it's starting to get interesting, but I still really struggle. Like I don't understand these characters. I don't like them that much. I don't understand what's happening. I don't believe it. And like, yeah, this chapter should make it. If you make it through this chapter and you're still not interested, then maybe this book is not for you. So I read the chapter and then I read maybe 20 more pages and I was like, well, I, I just don't care. Like, 
I could continue reading, it wasn't like completely suffering, I just didn't care and I wanted to read other books. So this was a DNF for me, I got to page 162. I just didn't care at all, so I'm sorry, I hope you're not offended because I really wanted to love this. I was so excited because I knew I would love it and then I didn't love this one, so unfortunately. Okay, last two books. So next one we had, it was our book club read and that was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I listened to this on audiobook. I finished it yesterday and it starts really great. It starts very promising. There is a mystery. Noemi is the main character and she and like their family receives a letter from Noemi's cousin who lives up in the mountains that she's not doing well and she needs help. She is struggling. So Noemi is sent to the mountains to deal with this situation and she goes to this town and she gets to the house and then uh, she's trying to help Catalina, this cousin, but and just something is totally off and that's basically what happens the entire book. There is something off in the house and we don't know what it is and that's fine because that keeps the intrigue up but nothing really happens like there is no big deal nothing like twist like this is supposed to be a horror and nothing horrory happens maybe until the last 50 pages i don't know i didn't i didn't fancy this one all that much at the same time it was okay it was really interesting i like the how it turned out or the explanation that was that was really cool and creepy but not on the list of my favorites so unfortunately this didn't hit it for me but it was still enjoyable so i give this one uh, three stars and the last book i read this month was the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed and i expected so much from this book because everybody says it's five stars it's a fantastic book it's the best book of the year it's the best book they've ever read and i ask you what kind of books are you reading if this is the best book okay i'm being really mean here but this was not the five star read for me i really enjoyed evelyn hugo's talking so basically what happens is uh, monique is one of the main characters next to evelyn hugo and Monique is asked by Evelyn Hugo, who is, who is this huge Hollywood star, to write her biography. Even though she's just a beginning journalist. And this is just in the beginning, so this is no spoilers, right? But everybody tells you about, oh my god, the twist at the end. And I was expecting the twist, and it never came. Like, there was maybe a twist, but it was, okay, I, I, I saw it coming. Like, we're basically told from the beginning. From the beginning, there is something going on. And the twist is basically just explanation of the thing that they said in the beginning. And it wasn't even such a huge reveal, I think. So this part I didn't really like that much. The twist, don't expect anything from the twist, it's not a twist. I don't like Monique at all, she is really strange. But I really enjoyed Evelyn Hugo's talking and about her life. So basically uh, we got, this is kind of a biography of Evelyn Hugo and I really enjoyed that. That was really really well written about all her seven husbands, why she had seven husbands and all about all the love affairs and everything and it was so good. It makes you look at Hollywood in a very different way which is amazing. So this got four stars for me. It was good, I really enjoyed it but it wasn't that amazing or it wasn't as amazing and everybody says so. So a little bit disappointed there because I was expected to be blown away which I wasn't. Anyway, uh, this was a good book, for stars. That's all the books I read this month and it was a great month. It didn't have that many amazing reads. Uh, I have a new favorite author, which is Grady Hendrix. I can't wait to read more of his books because they are fun. I love them. Favorite book of the month could be either Evelyn Hugo, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, or possibly Saturn Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That was really good too. Also, my best friend's exorcism. I love those three. Uh, so those might be the best ones this month. So yeah, that will be all. Let me know in, down in the comments if you read any of these books and what you thought. Let me know what you read this month and how you enjoyed it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took something from it and maybe we'll read some of these that I loved and let me know how you like them as well. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll see you at the next one. Bye.